Hello my YouTube lovelies and uh, welcome to episode 12 in my build series. Here comes the rain. <laughs> so, um, this episode I want to just look at the um, installing of the walls. Now I had um, a thought that I had with the wall was to try and have the wall as plain as possible. So I wanted to basically have it so it didn't have many joins in, etc. And so my initial intention was to build it kind of like the way a wall would be installed when you got it as an original panel van. I was also hoping not to put any supports in, so I was hoping to just um, self-tap screw straight into the metal metalwork. Hope you can hear me over this rain. And unfortunately, um, I tried a sheet in this corner cut out a little complicated round bit behind me that you probably can't see and screwed it in but it was just really really difficult the self tapping screw wasn't quite biting enough it then started to split the wood etc and so it was just a real nightmare uh, the wood that I used to do the walls is a 5.5 mil ply now ideally I would have gone thinner with 3 mil but the problem is is that 3 mil there was a good chance that I'd put my fist through it or my head through it or an elbow or something like that um, especially sort of in the bedroom area or anywhere sort of where there's quite a lot of activity on the sofa etc uh, so I went with a 5.5 so with the 5.5 I still had some flexibility um, but once I tried this one sheet and realized it wasn't going to work I basically decided that the only way this was going to work was that I had to install some battening so initial thinking was not to do the battening but eventually there was no way I had to do the battening so I had some 12 mil um, it's what I call shutter ply so it's just really rough ply and I cut the 12 mil shutter into 10 centimeter strips so you got quite a lot of flex in that and then what I was able to do was then screw those 10 centimetre wide battens uh, vertically running this full length of the van. And then with the 5.5 ply, I then ripped those on the wall saw at 25 centimetre widths. Uh, I didn't want it to be like the sort of tongue and groove that a lot of people use in their vans and it's nice um, but I just wanted the panels to just be bigger uh, the beauty was was that I still had enough flexibility to be able to then continue up the curve of the wall so there is a, a curve it's not a really really defined curve but nonetheless there is a curve in there so by cutting the strips up into 25 centimeter widths, it gave me a lot of flexibility to be able to then follow the curve up the wall right up until I hit the bulkhead metalwork which joins the ceiling. I went from the front to the back, so that is a full length of 2440 or 2 meters 44 centimeters, which is what the lengths of the ply comes in. So I ripped those into the 25 centimeter whips and then cut down the whips to then finish towards the end of the door. Um, on the other side, so on the cargo side, I then did the same, but I tried to, I can't remember now whether I kept the seam, I think I may have done it slightly different so that the seam uh, disappears behind the actual wardrobe. So it wasn't quite a 4 2.44, I think I had to do a small joinery piece at the, at the end where little short bits are joined together. The benefit of now having that uh, 12 mil batten in, which obviously before I was never intending to do, but now that I've got that in there, what that enabled me to do 
was that I had regular intervals of where I could actually secure the timber so what I did was I got myself a nail gun and I nailed it in because I didn't want to have a load of screw heads. You see a lot of people's vans with the tongue and groove and you just have lots and lots of screw heads that are visible so as much as possible in this build I've tried to sort of reduce the amount of visible screw heads as much as possible so that was the thinking now that I had those strips in there I was able to just um, go into it with a, with a nail gun. Um, I think I got sort of, uh, what were they now, 10mm or 15mm nails um, and that was enough to bite into the 12mm timber behind. Um, that was it really, That's the, the, the putting the wall up was actually fairly, fairly straightforward. Once I'd done that I then uh, had the two wheel arches to do. I decided to actually box them in mainly because it was just an easier shape to work with um, and also on the uh, cargo door side, so the kitchen side, the actual uh, wheel arch box is left open so I actually used that as a step to then get myself up onto the bed so it being in a box shape is actually quite handy. It also acts as a nice little seat back there as well. Uh, so the framework for that was just using uh, plain 2x1 timber, made a little sort of rectangle top and then the legs were done with 3x1 so I had a sort of bit of a rigid support with the 3x1 timber. So I made myself a box out of the 2x1 and 3x1, a little uh, frame work that would then sit over the wheel arch itself and then I use the same 25 mil sorry the 5.5 mil uh, ply and cut that to size and then glued and pinned the uh, what was it one two three four sides of the box and created a nice side solid box um, has got quite a lot of support it can take my weight which is really good and then those just sat, sat snugly over the wheel arch and then I was able to use uh, small little L brackets, uh, little corner brackets made out of metal where I was able to then screw into the wheel arch and then into the wall and I think I also did the same with the floor so it's got a couple of fixings on the floor too. So that was a fairly easy process. Um, that actually was a really nice stage because once that bit was done I was now in essence looking at an empty house it's um, it's the equivalent of moving into a house with no furniture in that was kind of the stage that I was at so I had now a finished floor I had a finished wall wheel arches the only thing that wasn't finished was the ceiling and the reason why I left the ceiling was because uh, I was always intending uh, to put skylights in so future proofing for the time when those skylights were going to go in I didn't bother uh, putting in the ceiling boards at this point. Um, I left that to a much later stage, uh, just to make the putting uh, the um, skylight in easier. Um, that's it really. Little tips, uh, which I didn't mention in the previous ones. So when I clad the wall in the insulation and I put the last vapor barrier in, I went along with a ruler and a sharpie and I marked out all of the main supporting beams, the metalwork uh, behind. I would do this as I was going along so I always had a reference so I would then transfer those sharpie lines each time I put a new layer on. So then that enabled me to then draw lines all the way across so I knew where all of the main vertical supports were and all of the horizontal supports. All of those were drawn in with sharpie. That just made the whole process of then putting in the 12mm battens for supporting the, the walls uh, easier to then um, find out where the places were to put the self-tapping screws. I also did the same with the floor. Once that was in, I marked out where all the battens were so I could then run a line and I knew exactly where I needed to screw down at any point. So that's a little tip that I didn't give you prior when I was doing the insulation stuff. But once it's in, just always sharpie, mark out where all of your supports are and it just makes 
the next process that bit easier. Okay, this is going to end here. The next episode, uh, number 13, unlucky for some, is the episode where I move out of the flat. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, please uh, like, uh, comment, and uh, if you really, really like it, subscribe to the channel, and it would be really good to have you on board. Uh, until the next time, see you soon. Bye. Thank you.